I got a confession to make. I've taught at the university for 10 years, over 3,000 students, but I am a terrible teacher. And I learned this one day when one of my students was all the way at the back of the auditorium. I finished the lecture of a lifetime. I was on fire. My students were on the edges of their seats. They were watching me the whole time, excited about the next piece of knowledge I would give them. And then this student after class comes marching down to the front of the auditorium, just strolling with some purpose. And she pulls out this notebook. And she says, Anthony, I made a list of all the things you did wrong today. <laughs> and I was a bit amazed. I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know what to say to this student after I had just given such a great lecture. And I didn't realize it at the time, but this student wasn't just telling me that I did something wrong. She was giving me an opportunity to be a better leader. My name is Anthony, Anthony Giannoumis, Dr. Anthony Giannoumis. I am, uh, as uh, Kayo said, American by birth, Norwegian by choice, and I started my career as a computer programmer. And then I went and worked as an opera singer. And then I went and became a professor. And a few years ago, I started my own company, and now I am a keynote speaker, I, I do storytelling, and I also do stand-up comedy. <laughs> so it's been a very winding road to get here. So Katie, after my class, comes marching down to the front of the auditorium and says, Anthony, I have a list of all the things you did wrong today in class. And so, shocked. I say, Katie, can you come back to my office and we can talk this out, we can talk this through. So I need you to imagine me there in my office, my fancy <coughs> professor office with my beautiful professor chair and all the books behind me. And Katie is sitting across from me with this notebook and she opens it up and she starts saying, Anthony, you started class 15 minutes late and I kind of just <laughs> roll my eyes. And then she says, and then halfway through class, you mentioned this term, but you didn't define it. You didn't tell us what it meant. And so I say, fine. And then she says, and then at the end of class, you said, oh, there's just one more thing. You said it five times in a row. And I said, Katie, why? Then she flips the page and starts again with her criticism of my lecture that day. And my brain just stopped working. It just went black. And I was in a daze, not really paying attention, not really understanding what she was saying. And the only thing that snapped me out of it was a car outside of my, the, my office building honked at a pedestrian. And it, it just snapped me in back into reality. And I look over at her, and I'm growing more and more irritated, more and more angry at her. Who is she to criticize me? I'm a professor. She's just a student. And I started imagining her in my mind as this buzzing little mosquito insect. This <laughs> and you just want to swat it away. Actually, she wasn't just a mosquito. She was like a baby mosquito. She was like a baby mosquito in diapers. That's how annoying she was to me. Now, Teru, I, I need your help. Yes. In Japan, what do you call your professors? What's their title? Daigaku uh, Kyoju. Okay. <laughs> so in the United States, we call our professors Professor Anthony, Professor Giannoumis, or Dr. Anthony, oh, Dr. Yes. Giannoumis. Yes. And in Japan, it's Sensei. Sensei. Okay. But in Norway, where I teach, they call their professors by the first name. So when we were sitting there and she said, Anthony, you did wrong, 
It hurt. <laughs> it, it hit deep. And then, as I was pushing back and telling her, no, I didn't do anything wrong. It was a great lecture. I'm a professor. As I was pushing back, she says, don't take it personally, bro. <laughs> and at that point, I lost it. I saw red. And I marched out of my office. I slammed the door behind me. I marched down the hall to my boss's office. And I said, boss, 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 Katie called me bro. <laughs> she threw me out of her office. She said, go handle it. So I'm going back and I'm looking at Katie and I'm trying to understand what she's saying. And she's making me feel small. She's making me feel very, very tiny. She's making me feel insignificant. She's making me feel irrelevant. As irrelevant as these computers from the 1950s, these computers filled an entire building. That's how irrelevant. Actually, it was worse than that. These computers, they used these punch cards to perform the calculations. And those punch cards were made using this machine that punched all the holes. And that machine was very fragile. It had a mechanism in it that would break all the time. She made me feel like that machine. That's how irrelevant and fragile my ego became under her criticism. And as we're going back and forth, it's like a boxing match. She would hit me with a criticism and I would try to hit back. And I realized at some point that I was defending the status quo. I was defending the way things are. I was trying to defend myself. And I realized that Katie wasn't a mosquito. She wasn't a mosquito wearing diapers. She was actually Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is a superhero, and she gains superpowers, super strength. And her teacher, her mentor, tries to control her and tries to put her in a box and keep her down. And at the end of the movie, she breaks free. And I realized I had that same situation with Katie. I could try to put her down try to put her in her place. I'm the professor, you're just a student. Or I could shut up and listen and try to understand where she was coming from. So I realized Katie wasn't just a mosquito, she was a superhero. So our first takeaway here, the first thing I want you to remember about inclusive leadership is that we as leaders need to shut up so that our team, our innovators, our brilliant minds, so they don't shut down. We need to shut up so that they don't shut down. So she and I went on to work together for many, many years. And one day we were in a meeting and I was leading the meeting and I was talking and talking and talking. And afterwards she said, Anthony, I had something I wanted to say, but you didn't stop talking. I need to be able to signal to you when you need to shut up. And I said, okay, what do you suggest? She said, do you know any sign language? I said, no. She said, well, there's a, a, a way of gesturing shut up in sign language. And she said, it's a very, very simple gesture and I'm gonna teach it to you today. So all it is is your arm outstretched. Let's do it together, everybody. Arm outstretched just like this, yeah? and then you go like this to the corner of your mouth. So let's do it all again, one more time. And then like this, perfect. She said, if you see me in a meeting and I go like this, then it's time for you to shut up so that I can have a say. So I want you to think about this whenever you go to work and you work with your teams because you can teach your team if you're the leader or you can teach your leader if you're part of their team this gesture, so that if you're in a meeting and you just need to quietly signal to the person that you have something you wanna say, and you're just sitting there like this, and they see you, they know it's time for them to shut up so that you don't <coughs> shut down. So what do you do when someone like me is taking up all the space in the room? Let's do it one last time together. 
One more time, ready? And there you go.